Hello again. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about calculus and in particular the relationships between derivatives and integrals. Now those of us who've taken a calculus class know that uh, derivatives and integrals are the inverse of each other. That is, if I take a function, some function say x squared, and I take its derivative, I get 2x. Well, if I integrate 2x, I get x squared again. So the two functions, one reverses the other one. They're inverses of each other. But the reasons for that maybe aren't completely clear. Um, I know when I was taking calculus, it looked a little bit like hand-waving to me. More likely, I just wasn't paying attention. Um, let me have a go at it here. And I think I've got a good way to explain the relationship between the two in a way that'll, that makes intuitive and graphical sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by explaining what a derivative is and where they come from. And then I'm going to explain one way of looking at an integral that makes it look like the inverse of a derivative. So here we go. All right, so let's, let's, we have to have some function. And I'll just make it look like that. Oh, my x and y axes there, that's, that's some function. I'll call it f of x. All right, remember function's just sort of a black box. You put a number in, you get a number out. You put this number in, you get that number out. All right, um, and along here, I'm going to define two points, x and x plus delta x. All right. Now remember, when you're, when you're figuring a derivative, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the slope of a function, okay? Its slope at some point. Well, why would you want to do a slope? I don't, who knows? There's lots of very good reasons why you'd want to do a slope. Um, let's say you're looking at an acceleration. Well, the acceleration is the derivative of velocity. It's time derivative. If you want to think of it this way, it's the slope of velocity. Now, the derivative of a derivative is a curvature, all right? So why would you want to know about a curvature? Well, uh, acceleration is the curvature of position. Velocity is the slope of position, the derivative of position. Acceleration is the slope of velocity. Well, it's the curvature of position. Okay? It's all very graphical, very geometric stuff we're talking about here. There's lots and lots of physical reasons why you'd want to do this. Electrical engineers out there, what about uh, circuit uh, uh, elements? How about a uh, capacitor? Doesn't that have a derivative in the expression for capacitor? There's another one. Economists, there's, there's uh, derivatives all over the place. We look at slopes of things all the time. So there's lots of reasons, good physical, practical reasons why we'd want to do this. All right. So let's go back to how Newton and Leibniz, Leibniz I guess, uh, define this. Well, there's x and there's x plus delta x. That means that's delta x is that distance right there. Well, that's f of x, and that's is f of x plus delta x, okay? Now, if I want, I can draw a slope between these two points, and the slope is going to be just a straight line that passes between this point and this point, okay? So we're, we're, we're talking about slopes. We're talking about slopes over a finite distance there, okay? This is what's called a finite difference approximation so far. We're going to get to a, a limit here in a second, all right? But let's, let's look at this. The slope which I'll call either f prime of x or df dx. Those are equivalent notations. They mean the same thing. Okay, make sure I got this in the frame. Boy, just barely. Okay, well that's the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. Okay, and forget the limit part for right now. That right there, let's just be inside the bracket there, that's a slope. That's change in the vertical direction, and that's change in the horizontal direction. Now, a thousand years ago when I was in, al in an algebra class, they called that rise over run. I don't know if they still do that or not. But it's change in the vertical divided by change in the uh, horizontal. That's slope. That's the definition of slope. Now, let's get rid of that. This limit here means something very particular. It means what happens when that delta x gets really, really small, okay? So small that it's as close to zero as you want it to be, but never exactly zero, because you can't divide by zero, okay? When these two get arbitrarily close, that slope, be, uh, the slope defined between those two points becomes the slope at that point, okay? So that's a derivative. And when we, uh, we learn formulas for, uh, uh, how to calculate derivatives. So let's say I have a function x squared. Well, we all kind of know the derivative is 2x. Or do we? Let's, let's plug that into this and see what we get. 
if f of x equals x squared, then df dx equals, let's see, limit, let's tell x goes to zero. Um, now everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put, f of x, I'm going to put in x squared. Okay? So f of x plus delta x is x plus delta x squared. Okay, that's the argument of the function. So I just stuff it into that function. Remember, function is just a black box. You stuff, stuff something in, you get something out. So I stuff that in, I get that out. All right, transfer function, I guess. Minus f of x, well, that's just x squared over delta x. All right, so far so good. Um, let's expand that out a little bit. Let's see, x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared, that's that, expand it out, okay, minus x squared over delta x. Now I'm going to run out of room on my little board here. Um, let's see, I'm going to erase some of this stuff. Okay, let's get rid of all this. Okay, so that was derivative. I'm going to do integrals here in a second. Um, well, let's see, that and that cancel out, x squared minus x squared must be 0. So let's write that out. What am I doing for time here? I'm okay. Let's see. 2x delta x plus delta x squared over delta x. Okay. Now delta x, don't let that scare you. There's nothing magical about this. It's just a number. We don't know what it is. So when we don't know what a number is, we just put a letter in there to stand for it. Right? That's what algebra is all about. So that's a number. It's just a little itty bitty number, but it's just a number. So there's nothing magical about it. Don't let it, don't let it freak you out. Just treat it like any other variable. Um, so I can divide through by delta x if I want. So that goes away, that goes away, and that x squared goes away. And I'm in frame here, boy, just barely. Okay. Let's see. That gives me 2x plus delta x. Well, if that goes to arbitrarily close to zero, but not exactly zero. This becomes so small, I don't care anymore. And from there, I just showed that df dx equals 2x if f of, let me try this one more time, there we go, x equals x squared. Okay, that's what we just showed. All right, we kind of knew that, but this is, it's good to know where it comes from. Now, let's change gears here, and let's see what happens when we start looking at integrals, okay? And we're going to wind up writing integrals in something that looks kind of like this, and you'll be able to see how one is the inverse of the other one. It's going to be pretty clear here in a second. Um, by the way, I want to make sure you know I didn't think of this on my own. I was reading a really good book uh, called The Language of Mathematics, I think by the the author's last name is Devlin, D-E-V-L-I-N. Strongly recommend that book. If it's in your library, uh, go check it out and read it. Um, if you've got a little extra money, maybe go to the bookstore and buy it. It's a very good book. Um, so anyway, let's go back to our original function here. Okay, that's x squared. And I'm going to put x there and f of x there just like before. Okay, but now we're going to talk about integrals, okay? We did this, now we're doing this, all right? Remember, an integral is the area under a curve, all right? That's, that's the most uh, simple geometric description. Why in the world would you want to figure out the area under a curve? Well, go back to maybe uh, dynamics. Let's say I'm looking at the speedometer on my car and I know how fast I'm going in kilometers per hour, or miles an hour, or furlongs per fortnight or something. And um, I know how much time, and I've recorded time and velocity. Well, if I plot velocity versus time and I find the area under that curve, I'm going to know how far I went, all right? Um, when, uh, you know, if I'm looking at, uh, you know, how much uh, paint to put on a wall or anything like that, there's lots and lots of good practical physical reasons why you'd want to find area under a curve, okay? So let's get that out of the way. And there's the area up to x, and we'll call this a of x, all right? Okay. So there's x equals 0 there, there's x. And I'm going to do the same thing here. That's going to be x plus delta x. So that distance right there is delta x. So far it looks pretty close, okay? Now I'm going to do one other thing. 
I'm going to find the area, let's see if I can do this here, the area of that little box right there. Alrighty. So again, this is this came out of the language of mathematics. No, I'm sure Devlin didn't make it up either. He went and found it somewhere else. But it's, this is a very coherent explanation. All right. Well, that that area right there is the box, right? It's a rectangle. If I know the height of the rectangle and the width of it, I can find the area. So the area of that is f of x times delta x. All right. Now, I'm missing this little part up here. That's, that's an error. Okay? But as delta x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, that little triangle there, my, the difference between the true area and my approximate area, also gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It gets arbitrarily small, small enough that I don't care anymore okay, is where I'm headed here. All right, so let's say I want to know, let's see, let's put it over here. Area of x plus delta x. I want to know the area not from the origin to that point under the curve. I want to know the area under the curve from the origin to this new point. I want to move this boundary by delta x. Well, what's that going to look like? That's going to look approximately like area of x plus that area right there, which is f of x delta x. Now, you may see where I'm headed here. Okay, Let me make one change here. Well, before I do that, let me, let me explain. The approximate, approximate is because I'm missing that little area right there. Okay? When I, if I were to apply a limit so that I let delta x approach zero, that little area there is going to become arbitrarily small, small enough to ignore. All right? That's where I'm headed. So let me, let me write this out in a slightly different form. It'll look maybe a little more familiar. Let's do this. Oops. Okay, so far so good. All I did was just take this and push it to the other side of this almost equal sign. I'm going to divide through by delta x, and I'm going to get get that. Boy, that looks an awful lot like a derivative, doesn't it? There's only one thing missing. I want that to go away. I want that to be an equal sign. Well, apply the limit, just like we did before. Am I in frame here? Yep. Okay, I'm good. This looks almost exactly like a derivative. Well, if, in, if I replace a, or just call a as some function, this must be the derivative of that function, right? That's, that's the definition of a derivative. It has to be. So right there, the area, if I the derivative of the area, is the function. Well, son of a gun, the area is the integral of the function. Now we know the difference. Now I've just shown that since area is a derivative of, I'm sorry, the function is a derivative of area, area must be the integral of a function. Integrals and derivatives are the opposite of each other, and that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So here you go. We started with the derivative, showed how that worked, and I wrote out an area. Okay, remember, derivatives are slopes, so I wrote out an area and came up with something that looks exactly like a derivative if you have area there and the function there. Integrals and derivatives are obviously inverses of one another. Pretty cool, huh?